YouTube, welcome back to my channel! Today I am here with Killer Meals. Guys, what is Killer Meals? Um, it's a new video I've come up with where I will be cooking um, some serious, twisted, messed up people's final meals. Simple as that. <laughs> I like true crime, so I thought this would be cool to add this in with the cooking. Today's meal is a little basic, just to start us off, but I will be doing more of this as we go, and we'll be doing more cooking, and yeah. There is a disclaimer, if you don't like true crime, you're not gonna like this video, and that's okay. Take care of yourself, and go watch one of my Dolly videos. I will put it right here or go watch one of my cooking videos down below. I will leave a playlist. Yeah, I was interested in this to say the least, so I bought a few books and started reading, and you ask yourself the question, why do like serial um, killers and uh, all these awful people get a last meal? That's what I wondered. All I could find was it says, each prisoner is allowed to partake in one final feast before they get executed. So I guess that's like everybody's right. Any um, big case that gets any media coverage, they will, involve what they like last ate in the papers and also you are granted last words which is pretty um interesting too it's some sort of way into a um killer's mind like before they go i don't know it's twisted and dark and weird but let's get into it and an execution fact um they used to call the electric chair old sparky <laughs> so today we are going to be talking about Judy, I have a hard time saying her name, Bueno Neno, Bueno Neno, it's hard for me, aka the Black Widow, aka Judy Goodyear. So, she was executed on March 30th, 1998 in Florida by electrocution. So her final meal was steamed broccoli, asparagus, tomato wedges with lemon, strawberries, and hot tea. So that's what we're getting into today. Okay, so here we are with our asparagus, and I'm going to just chop it at the bottom, um, just because that pot is just a little bit too tough that you don't even want that. And um, I'm going to set them aside, and I'm going to get my broccoli. So yeah, it's just me uh, eating, so I'm not gonna cook this whole thing, so I'm just cutting a couple pieces off to steam with my asparagus. Okay, so here we are at my pot and we're ready to steam our vegetables. I'm gonna take my asparagus and my broccoli and put the cover back on. And I'm probably gonna steam that for about, probably like 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so next Judy asked for tomato wedges. So I got some fresh tomatoes and I'm just gonna cut them in wedges how she had them and set them aside. And probably one of the most interesting parts to this meal is she wanted lemon to go on top of her tomatoes, which I have never heard of. Um, it's like double acidity there, but I was very intrigued. So I was excited to try that. And uh, she also asked for some strawberries. Um, yeah, if you're on death row, you're definitely going to ask for some strawberries. I'm sorry. They're like the best fruit ever. Okay, so it has been about 15 minutes and our vegetables are nice and steamed. We're going to go over to the cast iron pan, warm up some butter, and we're going to throw our asparagus in the cast iron pan with the butter. Now, she didn't get this. I don't know if she had this option. She had her steamed, but I'm putting mine on my cast iron because I need butter and yeah, I, that's how I'm making it. So yeah. And we have her beverage, her tea. I'm just taking regular Lipton tea and you know, that's about it. She didn't ask for sugar or anything, so. Yeah. 
So that's how I did it. And this is what it looks like. Ugh, is it not so good? I love it. Let's talk about what she did. Now, I'm not going to give you every little dirty detail in this because this is going to be a long video if I did that. Plus, that's a lot of work. I'm just here to do the food pot, the last meal, and give you like a little summary of what she did. But I will leave some documentaries down below if you want to really get into this case and, you know, watch it. I'll leave it down below. But mine is coming out of a book, but I also watched documentaries. So her crime, she eliminated her loved ones for monetary reasons, guys. I'm very interested in, in tasting the uh, lemons with the, with the tomatoes. Let's do that right now. Let's try the lemon and tomato. I'm going to put it on. Mmm. That's actually really good lemon on tomato. <laughs> some tea okay so let's get into why she is the way she is like her history okay so Judy was born in 1942 in Texas and her mom died when she was four and she went to live with her parental grandparents at 14 she reunited with her father and her stepmom in Mexico here she claims that she was mentally and physically abused by both her father and her stepfather. In result of all this abuse, uh, she would start to get in trouble. She started to attack her stepmother and then she threw hot grease on both of her siblings that her father had with her stepmother. That's when she went away to jail for 60 days. Yeah. After that, the judge gave her two options. Either go back to live with your father and your abusive stepmother or attend a reform school, which that's what she chose to do. She ended up graduating from that reform school at 16 years old. After graduation, she moved back to Texas in hopes to become a nurse, but instead, she ended up getting pregnant by an unknown man that ended up wanting nothing to do with her or the child. Um, so she went on to have her child, Michael, and went on to be a single mother. Broccoli. In 1962, single mom Judy met James Goodyear. He was an Air Force soldier and they married and he immediately adopted Michael so they could have like a legitimate like family and they went on to have two more children of their own. The children were James Jr. and Kimberly. It was a girl. Strawberry. In 1967, they ended up moving back to Florida where she opened a daycare center. Then James was stationed in Vietnam until 1971. When James returned, Judy started to poison him with vitamin C vitamins. They were laced with arsenic. The doctors uh, could not help him and he soon died from poisoning and nobody suspected anything at that time. Several days after he died, Judy would now collect on James's insurance policy of $53,000, which was a lot of money back then. <laughs> Tea. Then two months later, her house would weirdly burn down to the ground and she went on to collect $90,000. So now she's like, this girl's like rolling in the dough. Broccoli. So now in 1972, Judy leaves Orlando and moves to Milton, where she met her new boyfriend, Bobby Joe Morris. Poor Bobby Joe Morris. <laughs> At this time when she met Bobby Joe Morris, uh, she decided to spoil him and also get sick of her son, Michael. She said that she couldn't take care of him and she puts him in foster care. So she just like gets rid of her kid and just goes and has fun with her new boyfriend. How this woman got boyfriends, I do not know, okay? Um, maybe it was like the money that she had, but it was like blood money, ugh. So then in 1977, she ends up moving to Colorado with Bobby Joe Morris and her other two children. I'm gonna put more lemon on here. Mmm. The lemon is really good. At this time, she started spoiling Bobby Joe with all kinds of stuff and gaining his respect, and they lived together, so then she gets him to sign on a policy. 
and a life insurance policy, okay? And then she starts to give him pills. She starts to give him her poison vitamin C pills, and then he too dies, and she goes on to collect three separate ones. I don't know how she did this, but she goes on to collect three separate life insurance policies. This lady's rolling in the dough. After that, she returns to Florida. I think she keeps moving around because she doesn't want to, like, I don't know, stay in one spot too long. This is, the, like, the 1970s where they don't really, I don't know, I, I don't think they're catching on too good here. After that, she returns to Florida and she opens up a beauty salon with her money and she starts to try to focus on her children and she even gets her son Michael back into her custody, okay? Then, uh, in 1979, Michael, her son, enlists in the army after his... Um, adopted father, the father that adopted him, James Goodyear. He wanted to be just like James Goodyear. So he ends up enlisting in the army and is all excited and goes to Georgia and goes in, does all the stuff and he's allowed a couple days to go home and relax before he goes into his like, um, you know, station, where, wherever he's stationed. And... He hangs out, he, you know, eats and drinks at the house, and he's on his way to Georgia, and by the time he gets to Georgia, he's, like, deathly ill. They end up pinpointing what it is, treating him, but then his legs and his arms, they didn't work very well, so now he has braces, and he's discharged from the army. His dream. They found that it was arsenic, okay, these doctors, but then do not do anything. To me... This is where they dropped the ball, was here, because they found it, that it was arsenic. All up until then, they didn't find the, the arsenic, I don't think. I think that they didn't know what it was. <laughs> so dramatic with my sip. All right, so now it's the 1980s, okay, and Judy's attempts to kill her son Michael did not work because the army fixed him. Well, he's not dead, but his legs have these huge braces on them, and he basically is like needs his mom to take care of him at all times. So that sucks. Uh, in 1980, Judy takes both of her sons, Michael and James, out on a canoe trip. I think Kimberly, her daughter, is there, but she's not in the canoe. I think she's back at their, like, campsite or whatever. I know it's just them two in the canoe. And she intentionally, but made it look like an accident, tips the canoe and saves James or, or holds on to James. And Michael goes falling down to the bottom with his weighted braces and drowns. So she... Um, was definitely successful at this time at killing Michael. She gets back to the shore, she complains that there was a lot of wind and they lost control and it tipped, okay? The authorities still do not catch on at this time. I, I, I just can't even. She went on to collect from Michael's insurance policies from his military. Unbelievable. Here's where we come to the hero in the story, in my opinion, and his name was John Gentry, and this was her new boyfriend. Okay, this girl gets boyfriends, like, in, in like, two seconds. This is the guy that she dates that ultimately will lead to her arrest, and that's why I call him the hero, because she would have went on killing. She probably would have killed her two other kids, somehow got them to sign a, a policy, you know, like, so I love this dude. But he went through it, let me tell you. She started spending money on him, okay? Same way that she did with her other boyfriends. And she was like, you know what, we do this, we do that, we're always going out here and there, you know, let's um, get insurance policies, okay? So she ends up moving in with this guy, um, and again, started feeding him her poison pills and he takes them but he ends up feeling sick from them and stops taking them and she started forcing them on him and she's like no no he's like no 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 I don't um you know want them and she's like no 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 you need to take them so he takes them but he doesn't take them and he starts putting them off to the side and he ends up getting better so that was a problem for, you know, Judy, because she's probably running out of money at this point. She realizes that the pills are not killing him, so then she comes out with a second idea and decides to tell him that 
she's pregnant. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here thinking, why is he still with her if he knows that she's giving him pills that are making him sick? But maybe he thinks it's just like a bunk like vitamin and he doesn't want to make her like upset or hurt her feelings. You know those people that get into like essential oils and they think it heals everything and they get very personal about it? Well, I think it was like one of those things because I would have left if like a boyfriend's like giving me like a pill and he's like, take it. And I'm like, it's making me sick and I have to hide it. I don't want to hide nothing from my lover. I'm going to leave. But I think it was that. I think it was like he didn't want to hurt her feelings. She loves these vitamins. Maybe like she was like trying to act like she totally promotes the brand or whatever. But that wasn't working. So she comes up with a plan and says that she's pregnant. She goes, let's go celebrate. You go and get some champagne. And I will go back to the house and we can all go celebrate. So he goes in his car and he starts up the car to get you know champagne and there's a bomb that goes off but guys he does not die because he's the hero okay he's the hero here okay he's gonna stop this 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 devil woman right so now now the police start to figure out the pattern to this okay they put they question him because they don't you know they go to the hospital they don't think he's gonna live long they start to uh, bring up the pills that he had he goes gets those pills that he had and they figure out that it has arsenic in it and then they go into her beauty salon and then they find um all of the stuff to make the bomb in there so uh, they catch her after all that 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 guy had to go through a bomb in his car. Are you kidding me? In 1984, she was convicted to life in prison for her son's murders, okay? That was a whole separate trial. She never admitted to the guilt. That's what it said, never admitted to the guilt. And um, she spent her last days on death row eating chocolates and watching fishing and hunting television shows. I read two different things, multiple things. One of them was she didn't have any last words. And the other one said that she said, I'm ready to sit in the white seat of judgment. So I don't know which one of those is true. All right, so that is her story. She was rotten. Like, I get it. She had a bad upbringing. But there's lots of people that have bad upbringings and they don't go around killing people. And she was killing her own family. Oh my God. She has the um, Black Widow um, name and everything. But her last meal was a win with me. The um, asparagus. I was surprised with the lemon with the tomato. She probably didn't get a lot of lemon in jail. I don't think you get like fresh lemon in jail. That wouldn't be right. And asparagus, you don't get asparagus. Yeah, I think her last meal was pretty good. I can't wait for the next one. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Like I said before, I will leave uh, any videos that I watched on this down below if you want to continue on and really, you know, listen to the story. I just gave you like the summary of it. There's like lots into the story, but um, I just gave you the little gist, you know? So guys, if you liked this video, please press like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.